The third Thursday of the month, like I said, what is the third Thursday of next month? Anyone know? Sorry, let me ask that question differently. What is the date of Masterclass next month for August? Anyone know? What's the date? August 18th. Anyone notice that the market's shifting a little bit? Say, oh yeah? Oh, yeah. We're gonna have a panel called Pivot and Shift and it's gonna feature a bunch of people that absolutely dominated, like we're talking selling hundreds of homes through the last downturn and built to be dominant agents afterwards as well. So we're gonna have George Philbeck, who was literally the number one Keller Williams agent worldwide in 2009. He was selling 993 units a year. So he's gonna talk about what he did to change. We're gonna have Jackie Griffin, who comes from the coast. She's the number one agent in Brevard's MLS. They sell 130 million, uh, 300 plus homes a year. We'll have Beth Woodhall. She was selling a ton and she managed a lot of these reps at the time. She helped develop a lot of the best agents still in Orlando and she's gonna talk. So we're gonna have a badass panel. So you're gonna wanna pull out your phone right now and here's why. The first 100 tickets are free and the next 100, 200 tickets are gonna cost $10. And we don't check attendance. So if you go to masterclassorlando.com right now, you can get your free ticket for next month. If you end up paying our charity, it's your fault. I mean, we love it's going to charity, but if you didn't sign up and grab a ticket right now, it's your fault if you pay 10 bucks. Does that make sense? So grab your tickets. There's more than 100 of you in this room and uh, grab your tickets to next month. It's August 18th. It's gonna be badass. And like I said, last month, I'll say it one more time, you're gonna wanna come because November is our 50th session, a masterclass, and it will be the last masterclass ever. So you're gonna wanna come because you only got a few of them left. So uh, without further ado, I wanna bring up the sponsors that made Masterclass happen today. It's way harder without them on that screen, but I'm gonna try to get this right. Uh, these are all the sponsors. Make sure you connect with them after. They're all gonna take literally 60 seconds to share who they are and what they do. It's not enough time to explain their programs, but it is enough time for you to say, I need to meet that girl or guy and then go connect with them. Cool? Everyone cool with that? Yeah. All right, sweet. Let's, uh, let's kick this thing off. I'm just, uh, let's give you all mics. Sponsors, come on up. Let's get this thing started. We got Ryan Plaza in the fresh shoot from Home First Lending. All right, guys. I have to say, woo, I get woo. All right. Um, I'm Ryan Plaza, account executive with Home First Lending. Our focus has been conversion, leveraging our ISA department along with our loan officers. So if you're looking to partner with a strong mortgage company, close out the year strong, put some numbers on the board, reach out to me. Let's talk. Super excited to connect. All right, let's keep this going. By the way, I know Hope Richards with RTR title isn't able to be here because she is in court this morning and she's an awesome title attorney. She's a badass attorney and she's one of the top title attorneys for investors in the state of Florida. So can we give her a one, two, three clap on the count of three? One, two, three. Woo -hoo! Hey everybody, Heather Hurry, Pillar of Post, Jeff Mackey team, what's up? So listen, I just wanted to say this morning, your tribe matters. So I'm really looking forward today to hear the folks that are on the panel because guess what? Teamwork makes the dream work. So I'm excited to see what we can do to enhance our business as it relates to social media. But even more than that, guys, we're in a crazy time where there's some things going down with what? Homeowners insurance, things going down with roofs, it's hurricane season. All I gotta say is four point wind mitt, four point wind mitt, four point wind mitt. And if you need anything else, of course, just look me up, I'll be to the stage left. But just remember, if you need anything as it relates to commercial residential inspections, we're your folks. All right, have a blessed day. Hey Dave, there's an echo on or something, just so you know. Hey, good morning, everyone. Jeff Velez, Regional Vice President with Old Republic Home Protection. I'm here representing Cameron Foster, who's at another event this morning. So he talked about the market shift. Heard a podcast, and I have to, I need notes, I'm old. Good times create bad salespeople. Bad times create great, unstoppable salespeople, which is why you're here, right? So I'm gonna give you a stat. 77% of home buyers face unexpected repair costs in their first year of home ownership. Okay, so if you did 10 transactions last year, seven of your clients are facing unexpected repair costs. Two thirds of them are over $1,000. A warranty is a lot less than $1,000, right? So why are you not taking care of your people? Back to a normal market, you can start asking for concessions, right? You can ask for the warranty as part of the deal. Don't leave your people unprotected. Cover them with a home warranty 
A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, over public home protection, here to serve you guys. Have a great day. Let's keep this rolling. We got the tax man himself, Steve Bell with Harding Bell International. Hey, good morning. Thanks. Great to see everybody today. Uh, my name is Steve Bell, of course, uh, with Harding Bell International. What are we? We are a full-service CPA firm that specializes in what you guys do. Real estate agents, property management accounting, working with your investors, specifically foreign investors, FERPTA, and we have four locations conveniently located in Central Florida. We do speak Spanish and Mandarin in our firm. So if you have those clients that need that, we can certainly provide that. We're here to help you. We want to make your business more profitable. We want to help you. We want to become, we want, we want to be a resource for you, for your clients. Um, if you don't have a CPA or an account, we're here to help you. Love to uh, connect with you. I'll be around. So great. Thanks. Enjoy today, guys. All right. Keep it going. Hey, how are you? Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, David Quinones with Celebration Title Group. Uh, Celebration is not just our name, it is our mantra. It's good to see some familiar faces in here today. Uh, we are pride ourselves in providing uh, you and your clients a great and memorable experience throughout the closing process and at the closing table. But we are much more than a title company. Uh, we really want to spend time with our agent partners, really getting to know you, your why, and how we can be a partner for you and helping you sustain and grow your business, more importantly. So I'd love to spend some time with you after this. My colleagues, Lewis and B are here. Uh, so love to spend some time with you after getting to know you guys and uh, look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Good morning, Vic DeVore here with DeVore Design. We do photos, video, and home staging, and we're here to talk about social media success. So, of course, listing media is certainly good social media content, but DeVore Design, we've spent the last three or four months uh, formulating a program that's going to give you guys content for social media, and I'm sure that content is gonna be something that's talked about today. So, everybody that's in attendance here that registered, I'm gonna send you guys a link for, with a substantial discount to uh, participate in that program. So you'll get that email in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. Oh, and speaking of social media content, I've got to do my stage selfie, which we always do. So let's hear a round of applause for Aaron for throwing this for us. Thank you guys. You rock. Oh, and let me help Shay Walker up on stage. Hey guys, it's a vibe. So Shay couldn't make it today. She asked me to speak to all of you. She's from Shay Walker Photography, and if you are looking for the best photos that you will ever have of yourself in your entire life, she's the girl to call. She also helps you with your social media, so please reach out to Shay and have the best time. <laughs> Good morning, Samantha here, um, Business Development Manager for Home Team Mortgage. I have my team of loan officers here in the corner, but if you guys wanna save your clients from rising rates, we have a lock and shop program where your clients can lock their interest rate today, shop for 90 days. If the rate's lower, they have one free float down, okay? If you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, my handle is Samantha underscore home loans, and I look forward to connecting with all you rock stars. My bad, it doesn't work well when it's off. Uh, is Dave Buckles here? All right, we all, next up your favorite home buyer, he's probably out buying homes, but you should go to him first because they buy homes and they make it really easy. Give a quick one, two, three clap for David Buckles with Reliant Home Offers, one, two, three. All right, I feel like we're missing one other person, so let me just skim this really fast, unless they all, no, they're all here. So let's give, let's give one quick shout out to our supporting sponsors for today. We got the team from Central Florida Building Inspections, Title Genius. We get Candace Griffin with Griffin Investment Strategies. And we got Marlise and her team with Orlando Estate Sale, ladies. Can we give it up for each of those companies? Oh, you figured it out? Cool. Well, that makes sense. We've been wondering what's echoing behind me and it's my laptop. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna kick this thing off. You guys ready to learn something? If you are, make some noise. All right, if you have questions, you can text them in to 407-505-5194 and we may get a chance to answer them. Dave, can you turn me up just a little bit? I'll say that one more time. It's 407-505-5194. If you've ever gotten a text from us about a masterclass, it's the same number. 
All right, I'm gonna bring up our speakers and our new panelists. This is still going right here, Dave. Can I get, hey Bryce or Dave, can one of you figure this out? All right, let's get this thing started. First up, I gotta at least say that this man came all the way, not just from Brevard County, but he actually flew with his family up to Atlanta. He had to reschedule on me and then felt so bad about it that he decided he would fly back here, spend the night here, fly back to Atlanta tomorrow so he could be here today to speak with you. So it's part of why we have six people, but let's give it up for Shane Bergman. I didn't even read his bio, but that was pretty awesome that he did that. So he's a top 0.1% Florida realtor. He's a husband and father, a US Navy submarine veteran. He's won a Golden Addy Award. He's also a burrow enthusiast, which he could tell you more about. It's like a type of donkey if you don't know. $30 million plus producer in his what year in real estate? Fifth or sixth or so? That you did 30? Last year. So six year in real estate, $30 million. And if you haven't watched his videos already, you didn't come prepared enough because we sent you links in a whole bunch of them and they're freaking hilarious. Let's give a giant round of applause to Shane Bergman. Just, just get it, just grab a spot. Yeah, yeah. All right, next up, we've got Luanna Leventhal. She's a founding agent for Compass Orlando. She sold $22 million last year as a solo agent and has built her business primarily in Polk County. She believes business is personal and continuously ranks in the top 500 agents in Central Florida. Let's give a giant round of applause to Luanna Leventhal. Hey, Steven, can you help me? Steven, can you shut this audio off? <laughs> All right, next up we've got our half moderator, half panelist, Justin Pekarik. He sold $23 million in 2021 as a single agent. He also runs a brokerage of five agents. That laptop is making too much noise. He grew his YouTube channel to 6,000 subscribers from zero within the first two years, over half a million views on that channel so far. 60% of his leads come from YouTube. And in 2022, he's already closed 15 million, has 20 million pending, he's on pace to sell $35 million. He's the host of Parade of Homes. If you've never been, you should go. And as a broker, he sold $60 million this year. Let's give it up for Justin McGarrett. That's cool. All right, Kimberly Ann Zeidner, she focused. She moved to Orlando in 2017. She got licensed needed to find a way to get her real estate career started with no sphere in the area. So she turned to social media. She focused on Facebook and Instagram and 70% of her business comes from those two platforms. This year she created a TikTok account and now 100% of her team's leads in business have been generated through social media. She sold over $8 million in 2021, 100% coming from social media. Let's give it, oh, and her, Luana and Tiffany, founded the Play Nice Foundation, and they also actually donated $500 to our charity of the month. I gotta give, I know they didn't want me to say that, but they gave $500 to Rebuilding Together Central Florida, which put us over the $10,000 mark for the year. So let's give a giant round of applause to Kimberly Ann Zeidner. And Tiffany ha have a really long bio. So I'm gonna skip a lot of it transparently, but she likes spending time with her husband, Matt, who works for Land Rover for the last 12 years. Their two boys, Zachary and Brighton, and their two dogs. Tiffany sold over $12 million last year, and all of her stuff says Future Home Realty because that's where she was, but she just announced she joined Compass, so I promise you, I promise I didn't do that on purpose. It wasn't supposed to be three Compass people, but it just happened that way. Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just trying to run an event. Let's give a giant round of applause for Tiffany Yates. And then, last but certainly not least, Kat West was named one of the top five people to follow on Instagram by Yahoo Finance. Since building her Instagram presence, she credits over 70% of her business to the one platform alone. She comes from a family of brokers and has been selling real estate for six years. In 2021, she joined DXP, began building a team nationwide, has 18 agents under her. Her husband, Jeremy West, just joined the business, and they formed the West Collection and are pace to sell $15 million this year. Let's give it up for Kat West.
right, y'all ready to roll? Let's do this. Was that good enough, guys? Thank you guys for coming out today. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's just get started. We're going to go down the line. We want to know how you got started in real estate, and then we want to know how and when you got started with your favorite social media platform. So how did you actually start in real estate, and then how and when did you start with your favorite social media platform? We can start on this. We can start on this end. different and really be able to reach people on a real and you know different level than anyone else so um, I started kind of with Facebook and Instagram but really now I rely heavily on Instagram for the majority of my business and the majority of my leads um, so yeah I would say that it was planned but definitely didn't know that it would end up being such a great source hey guys so I got licensed five years this week, actually. Um, I was living in South Florida. My family and I decided that we were going to move to Orlando. And my father said, why don't you get your real estate license so that you can sell our homes? So I thought it was a good idea. I was dancing ballroom professionally at the time. And so my hours were kind of strained. I said, OK, I'll just take the test. But I ended up loving it. And I knew that once I moved here, I wasn't going to be dancing full time. So I'm like, this could be a really great career. And so that's how I got started. Um, I started with Facebook and Instagram um, immediately because, like I said, I, like Aaron said, I had no sphere, and so I needed to be able to generate business as quickly as possible for myself. So that's how I got started. Um, so I've been in the business for six years, and I just want to say I am just so honored to be here with these rock stars <laughs> and sharing the stage with them to talk about this subject. But. Yeah, I've been in the business for six years. Um, I, before I was in real estate, I was working for a magazine selling advertisements, which obviously <laughs> it was kind of going out of style at the time. And just, <laughs> I thought real estate could be a great way to make a little bit more money. And I got into it and I immediately started using Facebook and Instagram. And um, I love to tell this quick little snippet of a story, but I had somebody who, kind of condescendingly asked me when I first got started, so you're live, Facebook Lives, that's so cute. Like, are you really getting any business from that? And I remember just feeling like, oh, I'm not. <laughs> but I knew I was going to, so, um, and now over 70% of my business comes from social media, so, boom, take that. <laughs> I've been in the business for 11 years. I started in real estate totally by accident. I was one of those people that thought that it would be a great part-time job and that it was gonna be super easy. Um, and I was totally wrong, obviously. I was in school to be a special education teacher and I started because I speak Portuguese and this particular brokerage really needed a Portuguese speaker. So I was like, oh, I'll just shoot my shot and take the test and see how it goes. And obviously fell in love with it and fast forward, here I am now. Um, I live in the very glamorous Davenport, and so <laughs> I didn't know anybody there um, who grows up and says, I can't wait to live in Davenport, but here I am doing that too. So um, I also went to social media for that just to market listings, try to get buyers. Um, I started on Facebook pretty much and mostly farmed my community first and then branched out to Instagram to just, you know, work with referral partners. Um, I close about one deal at least per month from social media. Thank you guys for being here. Also, uh, I feel like it's some housekeeping and I feel like I'm gonna fall off the stage. Oh, no. um, like there's a lot of weight on this side <laughs> and it's me. But uh, this is my first time being here. I think I was one of the maybe 10 people that raised their hand. There's more out there, I'm sure. But for you guys to be here and come to something like this, I'm very thankful for that. And then Aaron hosting it. I didn't know Aaron a month ago, right? He reached out, it was amazing. So thank you guys. Also, Compass holding it down right, right here <laughs> and the panel. So I feel like that's important. And that wasn't the question that I was asked anyway. So um, 
how, how you got started in real estate and how <laughs> yeah, you got been, started been, on your favorite platform. No, I knew the question. Okay. I just did, I <laughs> deliberately did not answer it. Um, so I've been doing real estate seven years. Prior to, the, uh, to real estate, I was, as you know, in the military. So I was a nuclear missile uh, technician on submarines. As you can imagine, that is a lot like real estate. And um, <laughs> I, 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 want, I knew I wanted to get out of the military, and I knew that um, I needed to do something that would help motivate me and encourage me. And a, and a zero, you know, there's no boundaries in real estate. And to me, that was really appealing. So 100% commissions doesn't work for everyone, but it was something that I aligned with and left the military to pursue real estate. Um, I've always done it full time, haven't always sold 30 million. And I haven't always really been on social media. I started off doing social as a way to really entertain myself. I would do videos that I thought were funny. And then I guess a couple other people thought so. And then it kind of gave me the encouragement to pursue it a little bit more and deeper. And then I've gotten better, I've gotten smarter, I've gotten more articulate about my craft. Um, but initially, it started as a platform to say, hey, I'm kind of a goofball. I can be an asshole. I swear like a sailor, drink, whatever. Am I still going? Am I, am I, I thought he was cutting me off already. No, you're good. You're good. You can go. and, and I think we'll get more into that. I'm sorry I'm going over. But uh, for me, social was something to be able to show who I am and know that people out there resonate with that. And it was my initial attempt to get that audience. I was going to ask you guys. Oh, Justin. I oh, hold on. We're, we're, we're doing a new format now. We're going to switch it up. Okay, so... Peer-to-peer -peer questionnaire. This is what we're going to get some knowledge out of these people on this panel, right? So, who think? What, do you think up the content for the specific purpose of getting the lead? Or is it just like, I want to make a cool video about this house or this neighborhood? You know, how does your creative brain work? I want to know from a few of you on the panel. Hey, can you all also mention which platform when you talk about them? Just so people aren't confused. <laughs> really come from a place of thinking, hey, let me make this, let me see if it's going to create a lead or a specific lead. I really come from a place of value. So I think, okay, well, if I can come up with a topic that I want to cover, that's the most important thing. And then I think that following with that, then people can connect with it. If they see that you're providing value, then you know, over time, you're establishing that relationship with them and you're consistently providing something, then they're more inclined to work with you. Now, I don't do anything as elaborate as Shane does, which his are amazing, but I imagine there's a lot of planning that goes into those. Let's jump to Shane. Yeah, so I'm, gosh, here we go again. <laughs> I am a creative, but a very detailed creative, and it, and it can put you in a space where you get to, you overthink things, and on social, I don't think it necessarily needs to be that. Um, for me, and, and also we have a, a coach, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Tom Ferry organization, but currently Jason Pantana is our team's coach. So he's helped me and my team out tremendously as, as far as what kind of content to produce. But as far as the creative side goes, I am a runner, and I cycle, and it's a lot of time to be doing something that can result in pain. So your, your mind goes to a space where you start thinking about shit, and most of my creative ideas either occur when I'm on the, on the run, when I'm getting in miles, or when I'm on the toilet. Uh, <laughs> and then so what I do is I immediately uh, write, write down the idea and as much information about it as I can. And then the second thing I do is I get my phone out, because it's always with me, even on the toilet, and I record what I'm thinking and what I, how I want to articulate it, and I send it to my video guy. And then we have a really great synergy where we just collaborate on everything. We have a shared note where we go back and forth, and he'll say, oh, no, this doesn't make sense, and then we'll go back and forth and collaborate there. We, we diversify on all of our social platforms, but I would say to answer the, the question was, I think Instagram for me is a space where I feel most comfortable, but again, we support all of the different platforms. Okay, one more. I wanna hear what's your uh, content with, what's your lead flow like? When, when someone reaches out to you, how does it happen and what do you do next? Okay, I'll take that one. Um, usually the way people reach out is obviously gonna be through a DM, but I think a really important thing is to just make yourself bookable and make sure that everything kind of links back to what makes you bookable. So it's not a surprise to wake up in the morning when I don't have my life together and see an appointment that wasn't there and now it's at 8.30 in the morning and we're gonna be doing a selling consultation and I can't wait. So um, having all of your assets and things ready to be able to kind of 
convert those leads as soon as they come in is really important. The first thing I want to do is not call them and say, hey, can we reschedule because I wasn't ready? Um, so I think being just really easy to connect with. When I engage on social media, it can be such a time suck, and I think that's one of the negatives about it. So I think you really have to manage your time. When a post goes live for me or something goes up for me, I engage for 15 minutes immediately after it posts with other accounts and anyone who engages on that particular content so that I can, again, hopefully convert. Tiffany, what about you? Yeah, I, I do the same thing as Luana, honestly. Um, I make it just very easy to connect with me. So um, I use Calendly, which is a um, you know an appointment making software. So at the same time, I could wake up and have an appointment that I wasn't really expecting to have there uh, the next day. But you can go in and you can schedule you know, what times you're available and this and that. I think that making it easy for someone, making you seem attainable, um, they may be looking at a strange time of day or night and just making sure that they can reach you and connect with you, I think is super important. Kimberly, or Shane, go ahead. No, uh, Kimberly. So same as what they said, but for TikTok, it's actually more challenging because the only way that someone can message you is if you are both following each other. And so on TikTok, the strategy is that you have to try to get them to a different platform. So I'm always trying to route people to Instagram so that then I can follow them, they can follow me, and I can continue to nurture them. Facebook and Instagram are nurturing platforms. TikTok is outreach. So you have Say to Say that one more time. Just repeat that one more time. Uh, Facebook and Instagram are nurturing platforms, and TikTok is outreach. And how do you push them to Instagram from your TikTok? Um, throughout the video, you want to always have a call to action. And so sometimes my call to action is for more information, follow me on Instagram. Um, I offer some freebies sometimes. So uh, my TikTok videos that have been working, I do for sale by owner fails. And so I encourage people to submit the fails that say, they see on Zillow to my Instagram so that then I'm re-engaging everybody. And they're hilarious. <laughs> let's, get Kat, let's get Kat a microphone. What about you, Kat? So how people reach out, so um, I mean, I engage with a lot of my followers, so that's a big part of it. But again, I mean, a lot of the same things that you guys are saying, I have my Calendly set up, I have questions set up on my Calendly, so when I get somebody who is setting up a moving to Florida consultation, I know a little bit about their situation before I actually am meeting with them. Um, so yeah, pretty much the same. Justin, how about you? Uh, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's organized chaos, you know, it's, it's, you're trying to, and one of my next questions I think was, you know, what's your favorite platform, we'll get to that in a second, but I think we all kind of do a little bit of everything, right, and then you find what you're really good at and your niche, and when people start to reach out, it's like, how quickly can I get them uh, what they want, that one-on-one that -on -one time where they feel they get to talk to you, the, the celebrity they've been watching, you know, um, so I think it's just uh, scheduling and, and responding as fast as possible, and and diverting them to other content you might have already that answers their question for them, right? What, real quick, what type of content do you have pre-made that would answer their questions? What are some of the basics? Exactly, like when you're having the same conversation over and over and over with different customers and friends and clients, you realize, I can make a video about this, and I could put it up on this channel or this YouTube or Facebook or Instagram and direct people to it. Not in a dismissive a way, few? but it just answers the question. Give them a few examples of the, some of the questions you answer. How to buy a house how to get a mortgage, what are houses costing in my neighborhood, um, how to look for new constructions that are coming up. Love it. Let me switch to Shane, because this is where he kills it, too. Well, I, come on, I want to talk about the, the process before. Like, so the, the common trait that everyone mentioned is the, for the lead flow, it's efficiency, and then it's also a system. And I don't think this should just be with social. It should also be Google leads. It should be anyone that contacts you. You should have the same process. So we talked about Calendly. If you don't have a, a link to your calendar, I highly encourage you to jump in that. For me, it's, it's always the same process, whether they reach out on Instagram, Facebook, text me, Google, I don't care. The first thing, if it's a buyer or seller, I have a form that I send them immediately. It's a Google form, they fill out all the information. That Google form tells me their price point, how you know, immediate they're looking at buying, have they talked to a lender, all the shit that takes 45 minutes on a phone call that I dread, because I've done it so many times, again, being efficient. All that data is then put into my CRM so I have it. So when I do connect with that person, 
now I already know what we're talking about and we can jump right into it. It's the same thing for a seller. It's the same thing if anyone reaches and, out. And, and you also use a text follow-up and things like that. Tell them about that. Correct, yeah. Text so reminder. I have text reminder. I mean, I have a, I mean this is the thing that I think is important to, to drive home on this is it's scalable. So you have people up here that are producing a lot of real estate figures. We all didn't start like that. And if we didn't have these systems in place, there's no way our business could get to the next level. So if you're in here and you're just starting real estate, you know, you're a year and a half in the game, this is your time to start building those structures and that foundation, and that's gonna get you to scale. I don't care if the lead comes from social media, it's anyone if they text you or call you, get that process driven home so it can scale. I'm gonna add to that, not only do I agree, but one of my efficiency coaches, Ari Mizell, which by the way, you should write that name down and look up his books, A-R-I-M-I-E-S-E-L, he would always say it's actually rude to not have a way for people to schedule you when you're busy. Like to need to be, he calls it asynchronous communication, right? So if you aren't available to at least get something on the schedule when you aren't able to communicate at the same time and sit on the phone at the same time, then you're actually doing your clients a disservice because they don't want to always wait for you to be available and you don't always want to be available. So it just makes sense to add that system. Just thought I'd add that. Yeah, and, and I think when I, so my, my agents, I let them know if it's not on your calendar, it does not exist, period. Everything goes on your calendar. I don't care if it's working out or, or a meeting or whatever. The efficient way to do that is send someone a link to Calendly or Vite. I personally use Vite, both are V-Y-T-E. Both are incredibly efficient platforms and I think there's a lot of agents that are potentially afraid of saying, I'm going to get this and now it's going to be too clinical and too off hands if I just send them a link to my calendar. I think you'd be relatively, you'd be surprised at the amount of people that will fill that out. And then that link can live on your Instagram or on your Facebook or wherever it is. So it's not uncommon for me to look at my calendar and be like, oh shit, I have a listing appointment on Wednesday because someone already knows how to get my time. And it's then you avoid that awkward conversation of like, no, I can't meet you at that time. Oh no, sorry, that time doesn't work for me. What time works for you? They already just see what's available and you don't have to go into that explanation of, oh no, I'm actually doing this, so. It's also nice you can kind of pick where they are, like yeah. funnel them into places, like you want them on Zoom. Or like for me, like if you book into my calendar, you're meeting me at the Citrus Club. I'm not arguing, I'm not debating, I'm not figuring out where to go, I'm not figuring out how to park, like it's just one place and that's it. I'll also add to that, so I do that with Calendly, but I do a lot of voice notes. So if somebody messages me on Instagram, I'm sending them back a voice note so they get that personal feel from me, but I'm not giving them a whole presentation, you know, but they already get that personal connection, book that call, and let's get what you need done. Love it. Anyone else have something to add to that? Well, I think to your point, Aaron. Hey Dave, can we turn her up a little bit? Um, I think to your point about making it accessible even whenever you're busy, I think that's huge, right? Because it's not necessarily just about us. It's not, you know, we, everyone's busy, right? I hate that word, honestly. Um, just because everyone uses it and kind of uses it as an excuse to, oh, I'm so busy, I didn't get back to you, or, or whatever it is. Um, but allowing them to reach out and schedule something on their timing, I feel like it makes it much more about them. I also think, though, that it's all about the presentation. So I think a link can seem kind of cold, can feel a little bit disconnected, but whenever it's presented in the right way, whether that's with a voice note or making it to where, hey, I'm available to you, um, I think that that's huge. You can also put personality into it. I want, this is what I want to ask Shane about, and, and really all of you, but he's one that stands out. Tell them about some of the little bits of personality that you infuse into how people book appointments with you, the follow-up text, stuff like that. Um. I got like a message like this is Shane's robot. Yeah, or so like so I treat appointments like a doctor's office, and uh, and because how many of you have had a listing appointment or, or a buyer appointment, and then they never show up, and you're at the house like, hey, where are you? Fifteen minutes goes by, and you're like, well, that was a complete waste of time. I don't ever want that to happen, so I've included text reminders into my my uh, my appointments. Now I think Calendly does offer this, but I I don't think you can edit them to make it personalized. Uh, so I have a thing, it's called appointment reminder. You have to kind of know a little bit about computer uh, engineering to kind of build this. So it's a little complicated, but essentially my appointment <laughs> reminders go off. I have three. As soon as they book the appointment with me, they get an immediate one. And it says, hey, thanks for booking an appointment with Shane this time, this date. And it's signed off Shane's personal robot. And then they get another one 24 hours before. It's kind of a same reminder. It's like, hey, let's not forget about this guy. Robot out. 
And then the one two hours before the appointment is another reminder. Same thing, but I'm making it fun. I'm making it, let them know that I wrote it. And a lot of times they think I'm actually texting it to them. So they'll respond, I get the response. But I've made it fun and, and I couldn't tell you how many people say, oh, I got your robot. Or some people was like, I'll grease your gears, you dirty robot. That was, <laughs> that's happened a lot. <laughs> and, I, and I love it because I get those responses and I know they're reading it and they, and they don't forget the appointments. And it's just another way to kind of add my personality and the things, because I'm not a fit for everyone, and I hope we talk about that with yeah. social media. I'm, I'm not, and you can probably tell that in this room. You probably hate me or love me. I'm, I'm very polarizing. I think you just have to build your systems around the type of client that you're targeting. You need to build the way that you touch your clients or reach your clients around the type of ideal client that you want to have. So my ideal client is someone that's kind of like me usually women, usually in their 30s to 50s. So it makes it easy. It doesn't feel like work because I just get to be myself. And when you're yourself, the right clients get to find you. Yourself a little more polished, yourself with a few more systems in place, but still just yourself to attract that ideal client. Makes it easy. Love it. Anyone else have anything to add before we go to the next question? I, I guess I want to know, like so you said 70% of your business. is. I, I would, would like to know your ideal client. And I'm sorry if I'm asking questions, but no, I feel go like for it. Let's do it. Let's let's hear everyone's ideal client. <laughs> I, so, so I have two ideal clients. Um, one of my cli my ideal clients is a seller who is a female who um, their faith is important to them, and then the other is a producing agent who um, wants to connect and build their solo business. Those are my ideal clients. Well, and I think, too, that making sure that you're specific about that, right? Like, making sure that you, I've listened to a few podcasts where it's like, you need to build out your exact client, and then whenever you have that in mind, whenever you're building your content, and whenever you're putting it out there, then you'll tend to just attract more of, more of that. I definitely have my ideal client in mind with every single post. Like, that first question about, you know, am I expecting to get a lead from this video or real or whatnot. I'm not necessarily expecting to get a lead like, okay, I want to buy a house now because you posted that, but I'm expecting to connect with my ideal client, which turns in. Like Sorry. for people that have never seen your videos, can you give them some examples of the types of videos that you shoot and what types of things you're talking about? Sure. Um, I mean, I do, I shoot homes, so that's one that's super easy that anybody can do walking through the home. This is a beautiful home. That's my ideal buyer or seller. Um, and then I also do, just do fun videos about real estate um, and I explain the real estate market or I explain um, information on selling. Um, and then my third type of video is just something funny. Like I look at reels and I see other moms doing reels or other influencers producing reels. And then I just see how can that relate to real estate and how can I make that fun? Um, and then I just, I talk about the things that are like easy for me to talk about. So that, you know, that same subject, subject authenticity. Um, for me, it's really easy to talk about my family and what we're doing in our business and my faith and how good God is because it's just like, it's there. Yes, Jesus! <laughs> so I am unapologetically myself when it comes to that. Um, and so I have, I definitely have gotten people who have come to me and said, ooh, should you like really be talking about that? Um, and questioned me about that. I don't know if you know that's really going to be good for your business. And um, it's just who I am. I, I don't care who you are <laughs> and what you believe. Um, but I'm going to just be out there and show exactly who I am and what I believe. And um, it brings my ideal client to me. And that doesn't mean that they all have that same belief either. So, totally. um, I, By the yeah. way, if you're upstairs with me and you're still talking, there's not a wall here. So like, just because we're on the second floor doesn't mean your voice isn't traveling to the stage. So I just figured I'd We do have a, a massive light in our faces, though, also, to be <laughs> and fair. And you can't see them. <laughs> I got a question. Let's yeah. actually just let's jump around with that answer because Kat explained who her, like the buckets of what she shoots and who she shoots for. And I know I've had this conversation with Shane about the different five different buckets that he makes videos for. I'd love to get his answer and then each of you, do you guys have segmented groups you make stuff for or at least an ideal avatar? Shane. 
Yeah, so Kat nailed it as far as when she, before she even creates the content, she knows who she's, she's creating it for. So that's an extremely smart thing to understand. Um, I was just having a conversation earlier with someone where it took me probably four years before I really understood why I'm on Instagram. I always was just like, ah, it's my friends and my family and they'll follow my shit and whatever. Uh, and then it got to a point where it's like, I can grow this thing and I can get leads from it and then I can get other agents to refer me business and then it just clicked in my head where now I, I went really deep and I said I need to start making content for these types of, of uh, clients. So we've, we've really changed our strategy this year um, where I, we focus a lot more on growth and I have five buckets with a six that uh, we play with to kind of throw it in there. And so for me, I know that I want primarily sellers and, and buyers and then agents. So all of my content is, is focused on that. So the buckets that I, I operate in, I have something I call RE101. It's real estate knowledge. It's, it's consumer facing. It's showing them that I am an expert in my field and I know what I'm talking about. And they're very short clips. So kind of what we were talking about earlier, do I need a home inspection? What's escrow? All these questions you're getting when you're on these appointments with your clients, write that shit down and do a video on it. I, I couldn't tell you how many I have a note with so many questions, and it doesn't have to be something extremely elaborate. It can be really quick and to the point. But if someone asks you that question, write it down, do a video on it. So that's my RE101s. I do another one called Shane's Savvy Solutions. Uh, because I, <laughs> I love that. I love alliteration too. Um, I'm an efficiency monster, so I love anything that's productive. It has no real relation to real estate, but anyone that has a business. So I did a talk last week with my team about um, text replacement on your iPhones. If you guys aren't using text replacement on your iPhones, like that is a game changer in itself. If you text something the same thing more than twice, it needs to be a, in a template. Same with email. I have the same philosophy. I use a ton of templates, a ton of text replacement for that. But RE101, we talk about... Real estate knowledge, Shane Savvy Solutions, I just want to say it again. I'm talking about efficiency. I'm going to give you guys one more. It's called Swift Key. For those of you guys, especially Android. Is that users, Android? There's a no. thing called Swift Key. You that download it, and it, me it memorizes all your keystrokes and things you type over and over. <laughs> it works on the iPhone as well. Polarizing. If you're Android, I'm sorry you're not my guy. <laughs> or girl. <laughs> um, the, the third bucket we go into is where I get to showcase my humorous side. Uh, I used the analogy last week where I was telling someone that I, um, I like my humor like my coffee, dark. Um, and I am a super dark guy, but it's funny. And again, I'm, I'm directing it to an audience that will find that shit funny, and if they don't, cool, they're, they're out of the, the way. Social media should be viewed as an initial barrier of entry into your business. If they like you, cool, they've now penetrated that. If not, they're going somewhere else and it's fine. Let them find their better fit. But that's how, so, how social should be. Um, fourth one I do is video uh, quick walkthroughs. Again, all of these are one minute or shorter. We're really focusing on, on Instagram Reels. The video walkthrough, we call it quick tours, is my listing video. I've, I've made those different over time where I used to full on creative process, dress in, in a character and do some shit that was just extremely exhausting mentally. So now it's a quick video tour, it's one minute. Um, if, someone, if you haven't seen this, he like dresses up as Hamilton and does an entire musical. I did. Like we, we're not talking like a little bit. We did we're a musical like, on a roof. It was an amazing. I've seen Ron Burgundy. I have to name, a, name a few of them, man. Yeah. Give, give them a few ideas of what you do. So th then those would fall into a bucket we call skits now. So skits are where, mm -hmm. I, something relevant. So pop culture, something that, like we just did a Stranger Things video last month where. <laughs> There, there was, there's literally a street in my neighborhood called Vecna. And I'm like, this is, this is low-hanging fruit. And the agent that listed it didn't do shit with it. So I'm like, I'm doing shit with it. So I went to Vecna, and I lost. The, the premise of the video was like, man, I lost out on something. What was it? Well, shit, they, they should have hired me, and they didn't because I wouldn't reduce my commission. That's the message I'm delivering. I'm not a discount broker. And at the end, Vecna is like, do you guys know Stranger Things? Am I just talking to... <laughs> So Vecna's gonna, gonna kill me, right? And then I'm like, man, do what you gotta do, but I'm not coming, and he kills me, right? And so that's my dark side coming in, like, I, I will, the, my I principles, it. I'm not gonna bend and then, uh, under anything. Did we get the fifth one? Did we do the fifth one? Uh, yeah. Skits, skits would be fifth. And then uh, my sixth is my wild card. That's where I'm like, you know what? This is gonna be a longer video. So if you guys watch my socials, we just did a, a vlog on a triathlon where I had a wager for $1,000 for a charity. So me and this other guy, another broker in my, in my county, Space Coast, uh, that's where I came from. I didn't talk about that earlier. Um, but we did a six-minute vlog that lives on YouTube. That's my wild card, because that's like going to go everywhere. It's not really yeah. general. So but can we name the six buckets one more time, and then I want to hear the rest of y'all. So Real Estate 101, so that's Knowledge Broker. Um, 
The second one I do is called Shane Savvy Solutions. So that's just being efficiency, being fun, it's productive, you don't have to do it. Uh, we, we did another one that I didn't mention earlier, with testimonials. So social proof is extremely important uh, in, the, in the social world. So that could be anything from a, a client review, it could be a video testimony, if you're doing those, post them, um, or photos with your clients at closing, I think most of you probably do that. We do the quick walkthroughs, one minute of all my listings, because now I'm showing um, basically value to my sellers, and people can walk through the house in a minute. And I've had people get, yeah, and then the, and then the um, and wild card. Is that, then the wild card, and skits. Skits would be five, and then wild card is six. Anyone else want to break down who you shoot for, or, what, or who you make content for, and what you, how you break down your content? So um, I kind of have two main groups. Hold that mic a little bit closer, you'll be. I have two main groups that I kind of focus on. Every Sunday I do a relocation realtor post, okay? Because early in my career I got into relocation. I enjoy it. I think that you convert relocation buyers and sellers much quickly because they have that need to buy or sell. Um, but the other thing that it does is that it helps me build relationships with other agents. And so whenever I'm doing these posts, I'm asking them or they're sending me um, their listings. I post them, I tag them in it, and I'm saying, if you're looking to buy or sell in this area, I can connect you with this agent. So now not only am I getting people come to me for relocation purposes, but I'm also getting referrals from those agents that I've built the relationships with. Um, the other one, and I have to give Lou credit for this from the last time that you spoke on the panel, she said something that really stuck with me, and it was that when you are trying to speak to your target client, you can't just think about it. You have to actually do it. And so I wanted to work with sellers at the time that you were speaking up here. And so I shifted the way I was posting to not focus on buyers so much anymore and to specifically be targeting sellers. Because most of us day to day are thinking about those buyer posts. We're talking about interest rates. Everyone's doing that. So whoever your target client is, really think about how to speak to them to get that message across and, and pull the trigger on it because it worked. I mean, you said it, I primarily list now. So you just gotta do it. And I think that that's honestly being super intentional too, right? It's knowing, hey, okay, I'm buyer heavy right now, but is that for a reason? Is that because I'm focusing all of my content and my attention in that, in that direction? Well, a lot of it does have to do with that. So really being intentional, re really saying, okay, do I want to, you know, my ideal client is on the listing side, and then putting it out there and really, you know, focusing on that, I think that you see big returns from that. So that's Love awesome. It. Good job, Lou. Can we, uh, does anyone else want to chime in on that question or should I switch it up? I'm just gonna make a quick note on that. I really use my Facebook for my community. If your Facebook does not have a community page, make one. If they don't have a buy and sell page, make one and be the admin for that page and engage. And even if they already have one, like I'll go in my Facebook page for my community and just post like the newest restaurants, what I ate, what's coming into town. The ladies of that particular group will engage with me. I'll add them as a friend. Then by default, they see my real estate stuff on my feed. I just got a client under contract this week from doing that pretty regularly. I also got a great idea from a, fr a dear friend of mine, I'm gonna plug you now. Um, I have a private Facebook group for all of my past clients and the cool thing about that is that they've all become friends with each other. So now when I post in any group, all of them are tagging my name. So that's pretty awesome. I mostly use Instagram for um, network, network, bleh, networking with agents. All these girls have become my friends in real life because of Instagram. And I think you should not underestimate the power of your referral network. Um, some brokerages are smaller. They don't have a referral network. So they participate in looking on Instagram to make sure that they know who you are and that you're going to be a right fit for their client. Um, it's not uncommon too that I'll go to a listing appointment and they'll say, I already know everything about you. I just want to make sure you match. We already feel like we know you. So also don't forget to share some personal stuff like my dog's on there, my kid's on there, my husband's on there, my life is on there as well. Not 24 seven, but you want them to be able to connect with you. So don't make it just house, 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 house. Like we get it, we're in real estate, but make it a little bit about you too and your routine and the things that you like. I think that everybody up here is really good at, at making it a bit, a bit of both. And I think that something that's really important to me along those lines too is I know that a lot of people have systems and they try to really zone in on, okay, well, what can I push off to someone else? What can I, you know, can I have a social media manager? Can I have someone do 
these things for me. I've been really, really adamant in my business that I want, especially Instagram, with it being my primary source, I want it to be me. I want it to be authentic. I, I know who my client is, and I want to make sure that I'm connecting with them, and whenever they do reach out, it's me responding. It's, you know, there's plenty of other things that can be automated, but I really think that if that's, you know, you're putting so many eggs in that basket, that it really should be authentic, and it should be you that's replying and engaging with them. Love it. Let's switch it up for a second. I want to ask you guys about your favorite tools, tech, systems, like what are some of the apps, tools, systems, things that you use to be efficient on social media that people in this room need to use? We could, we could stay with you, Tiffany, and just go down the line. Let's do it. Let's just get everybody's. So something about me that I'm, uh, that I'm trying and really um, is a goal of mine, especially with the new bro brokerage, is I'm not really good at systems and trying to move stuff off my plate. I tend to be really um, type A in that I want to control it. I want to know when it's going out. I want to, whenever it goes live, I want to be the one interacting with it. Um, and really trying to engage and, and make it work. So I don't use a ton of um, systems or platforms. I mean, obviously, you know, we've got Canva and several um, things where we can go out and market and make up our own content. But as far as that, I don't really use a whole lot of automated stuff. But I plan to change that. <laughs> Let, let's hear from you, Kimberly. And Dave, can you turn them up a little bit? And y'all make sure you speak really into the mic. Hello. Um, so Canva, obviously, that's a big one, I think, that we would all say. Um, Snap Talk is a really good one. You can do your TikTok videos and then you upload it to SnapTalk and it takes the watermark off so that you can repurpose it to other platforms. So you can create reels, uh, YouTube shorts, anything like that once the watermark is off. If you try to upload a TikTok to Instagram, it's not going to get sent out to anyone. They want that watermark off. So I've been using that one a lot. Can I give you guys two that you guys should write down? The first one's called For Display Purposes Only, or DSPLR. You should Google For Display Purposes Only, and you'll see this weird hashtag. You can type in as many words as you want, up to 30, I believe it is, and it will give you as many hashtags as you ask it for that are most common using those words. So if you don't know what to hashtag, that's a good place to go. The other one I wanted to mention earlier uh, is called Newsfeed Eradicator. This won't actually help your social media. This will help make sure you don't waste too much time on social media. It will actually eradicate your newsfeed for Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever you choose to set. Or you can set a timer where you can only be on for 60 minutes or only on for 30 minutes. And then it will actually replace your newsfeed with an inspirational quote. What's cool about it is you can still use the platform all you want. You just won't be caught scrolling on anyone else's stuff. You can only go in there and be intentional. So I just thought, I thought I'd share those two. For display purposes only and newsfeed eradicator. It's a Chrome extension. I do have one more, answerthepublic.com. You go in, you type in real estate, let's say, and it comes up with all of the most popular searches that people are doing in the world on real estate. And so you can create content based on that. And that's gonna help with your SEO and all that stuff. I'm just telling them to write that down. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, well, Canva, absolutely. I also use Planoly. So I am also, with my Instagram, very into me posting it all. Um, I don't like it to be automated, but I do use a virtual assistant, so when there are videos that need to be spliced together, I send him all of those videos and he splices them together and you know makes it look good and then I'm the one posting it. Uh, but Planoly, I love because I can put everything in there so I can see what it's going to look like on my feed um, and then post away. Um, and then there was something else. Well, we talked about Calendly. I think that's it. I am the worst video editor in the world, and it stresses me out, and it makes me not want to do video. So I have recently been using Video Leap. I actually think it's extremely user-friendly, so user-friendly, in fact, that I can do it. So big fan of that. If you don't have a gimbal, buy one today. Put it on your Amazon cart. It's $109. It's gonna make all your videos just look a lot more elevated, less shaky. Um, DJ, DJI is by far the best brand. It self-stabilizes itself. I also just got the um, Mini Pocket. It's about this big, and it's a gimbal that literally can fit in your purse, so you're not carrying 100 things with, with you, and then it goes immediately onto the app where you can edit from there. So I'm all about just simplifying. Again, if it feels like work, we're less likely to do it. So trial and error, you know, give yourself some grace, but just put your, you know, just, just get started. Put it together and just put it out there. So definitely Gimbal 
and I love Video Leap. Um, those are my top two right now. By the way, after this session, because I know Shane shot an entire video explaining all the equipment that he actually uses to shoot video, and I'll send that out with the replay of this after the session so he doesn't have to answer that question twice. But if you have tools, tech, systems, uh, and then I want to hear from Justin too, so let's make sure he gets a mic. Should I go or let Justin go? I'm going. Um, <laughs> I, want, I want to hear that. This is what I came for right here. I think foundationally CRM, I, don't, I think it's bigger picture, uh, but everything that you do should, should live in that CRM and then it can also connect to some of the other things that what we've mentioned here. Um, if I'm trying to be super brief about it, uh, an application I use on my phone is uh, it's a video application. I, I, I don't like editing, I, I, I don't find, um, it's, it's, it's very taxing and, and uh, boring. Uh, but, if, but if you're an editor, it's great. But there's a program called Splice. Splice is free. It's where I probably, if, if I edit any video, it's always going to be on my mobile, and it's going to be on my phone. Splice allows you to super easily edit together a clean video and then, then post it out there. Um, to kind of piggyback on Lou's talk about, really, this is a gear thing, the, the video that Aaron's going to send out. In my car at all times, I have a, 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 it's called a Joby tripod. It's the larger one. I think it's 5K is what it's called. It's, it looks a little sexual to some. Um, sorry, I'm just, you know. Glad I'm going spade. live on Facebook right now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. Um, but it lives in my car at all times. It, it's about eight, it's, it gives me a good extension on it. I'm not gonna say how big it is. And then uh, there is a mount also that, <laughs> Jesse is just so disappointed that he knows me. <laughs> uh, and then there's an, a little amount that, that you can put your, uh, put put a put your phone on it, and then on top of the phone is a microphone that lives in my car at all times. So if I'm doing a video tour of a property, if I'm doing a quick something, at least I can extend it out here, film, and then I'm getting very clear audio. I think a lot of people that that do video don't focus on the audio aspect of it, which is actually more important than the visual. The sound is is the, is the most important. Visual exists, not over there, uh, but but audio. So I think the the thing he's going to push out. It's $140 for all three of those pieces of gear. It's the best tripod you give it, the best iPhone mount, only iPhone, and then microphone. Take let's, your let's case off the phone when you set up your gimbal or it will not stabilize. When people get it, they'll say, I can't set it up. You have to take the case off to, to set up the gimbal, but it self-stabilizes really easy. Also, let's, get, let's get Justin's and also Kat. I want you to explain what you carried around that you had earlier. And Dave, do you want to chime in on this one at some point too? Do you have an equipment recommendation? Because if so, I'll let you answer after them. Yeah, for sure, guys. This is, it's evolving too, right? The stuff you started with five years ago, yeah. you look at it, it's like this drawer of junk you had before that you used to love it, and that was a better thing. So it's not always just that one product out there right now. You gotta keep looking out there for what's working better. And I think sometimes you try to go really complex because you think it's gonna be better quality, but you might find a more simplistic way to pull it off that still sounds good and looks good for the customer, right? So for me, it's a simple gimbal. I have what I call a YouTuber backpack, where I always load it up wherever I'm going. It's got the gimbal, it's got the drone, it's got a little lavalier microphone. But then you gotta sync all that stuff after. So sometimes you have to think about, is this gonna be on YouTube? Is this gonna be on Facebook? Where is it gonna be? And am I gonna spend that time editing, because it is taxing to go into all those edits. Um, can can I, you walk them through the thought process? Like when you decide where it's gonna be, what does that change? Exactly, so by the way, on, on your YouTube channel, you can start a YouTube channel, have zero subscribers, and you can put unlisted videos or private videos. So you say to a client, hey, you're not available right now, I'm gonna go tour this million dollar house for you in Winter Park, and I'm gonna make a really cool video for you, a walkthrough as if you were there with me, with my comments, I'm gonna send it just to you. But you could also have an unlisted video that you send to a hundred different clients of yours, and it's not out there publicly. It also gives you that practice. So you can really learn, well, how do I look and sound on camera? And how am I moving the camera? So not like whirling dervish, right? And, and make it look good for them. Imagine if you were in California trying to buy a house in Orlando, and all you get to look through is this realtor's little lens. So make sure you work on your camera techniques with those gimbals and tr test out your gear and your ability to edit. What I would say about that is, don't be too scared about iMovie and those simplistic programs. I started on one on, on PC that was just, you just cut the clips, that's it. You know, and you can take it from there. That's really all you need. Cut out those stuff you don't want to be said, right? Trim the fat. Yep, trim the fat. It's a good way to think about it. And one thing I wanted to transition to from the gear, the, the techie stuff is, don't overthink it. You know, start with just your phone. That's your, that's your best starting tool. 
and then go to your different platforms like everyone's figured out here. You guys probably agree that you started on one platform and you tried a bunch of other ones and maybe you had some success, maybe not, and you just gotta keep putting it out there and see what you get back, right? Also, I really love how everybody's got infotainment, informative content that's also entertaining. Infotainment is what people wanna watch longer on YouTube and get that five minutes watch time and then actually look up their phone number and reach out. Uh, the, the quick stuff is good too, you know, because it's great when you just throw a story up there and all of a sudden a past client reaches out saying, hey, I, I forgot you're still in real estate and I've got a house to sell, so I wanna use you. And it's all about that timing and because you guys are diligent about putting out that content. Okay, one, one more question for, uh, from me and then I'll let Aaron take back over. So what are some of your biggest failure moments with content you put out, where you put something out and it just was a dud? I'll go ahead. Yeah, the list is long. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fails every day. I, I feel like we all get so worried about like, oh, I don't want to say this wrong or I don't want to type this wrong. I type stuff wrong all the time and I'm like, I am, you know, the disc assessment. I am a very high D. I'm just like, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. So a lot of times there's maybe a comma's missing or whatnot. Like, get over it. <laughs> if, if you don't want to work with me because of that, then we're probably not the right fit. Um, so I've definitely done those. Another thing that I guess I would say is a fail but also isn't, that I think a lot of people will feel like it's a fail, um, you know, my Instagram is where I get the majority of my business. I started doing TikToks because I saw this girl's TikToks <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. This is so good and you can just be yourself and, you know, you, can, it, it's, you don't have to be as edited there as well, which I love. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to start doing this and I have like maybe 200 followers and I got a buyer. <laughs> Like, what? With less than 200 followers. So to me, it was a fail as I was putting up videos on TikTok because I'm like, nobody's watching these. Like, nobody's engaging. Like, that was a total fail. But you just think it's a fail. Like, it, it doesn't mean it necessarily is. And people are watching. I think another thing is feeling like you need to have a million followers. You really don't. If your engagement is high, it doesn't matter if you have 500, if your engagement, you know, 70 people are engaging with you out of those 500. So pay attention to that. Don't feel like, oh, I didn't get enough likes, so I'm not going to reap a return. Um, I think that's just something that we really overall can get easily caught up on is, again, feeling like there's no engagement, but you never know who's watching. It's kind of like when you have a listing, it's great to have 500 offers, but do you really need to have 500 or would a couple do just fine? So I think um, kind of apply that to your, to your social media as well. Oh, and also last thing, sorry. Don't feel like, I think we overestimate what people know, what the general public knows. So it's okay to get down to the basics with what your content is. I think we overthink it. Oh, well, everybody already knows that. Just because we're agents and our feed is full of all this stuff doesn't mean that everybody else's feed is filled with the same information. So make sure to always be a resource. Love it. And I'm going to actually, because you guys are already starting to answer one of my other questions about misnomers, I'm going to ask all of you about the common mistakes or misnomers. But Dave has something to chime in about equipment you should have, and he's the content king over here. What's up, guys? My name is Dave Stewart from D. Stewart Productions. And this is, give it up for this panel. This is an excellent panel. I feel like a lot of times when I'm trying to win a client, I'm saying the same thing that these guys are saying, but it just sounds so much better when you're <laughs> hearing it from them. But largely... To simplify it, it's really about narrative. It's about your story. And if you're trying to figure out what you can shoot, who you are. And also, I, I think more importantly, uh, what I want to talk about is when you hire someone, I think we get excited, and you go hire a camera person. And you have to understand that most of the time, that camera person only shoots video. Uh, like our friend here was talking about, he collaborates with his content creator. And that's so important, because you have to have someone Largely, when they're cynical, it really helps because they help you test what you're going to do and test the market. So make sure you find someone that can help you direct, that can help you with ideas. A content creator sometimes is not the videographer. Sometimes it's a friend of yours that you hate to share an idea with, but they have great ideas and great structure that can help you. And that's pretty much it. And if you need a friend, D. Stewart Productions will help you for sure. <laughs> hey, I'm actually just give it up for Dave. I'm going to let Ju Justin... Chime in on that real quick. Talk about how you hire camera guys and do the editing and things like that. Because I know Justin sometimes just hires people to hold the camera and does it himself. 
That's Bumble. right, and, and we're still figuring it out. I was going to ask the panel if you've discovered somebody that, I know you probably don't want to share the name because it's like, it's my videographer, right? But the, it's so tough to find someone that you gel with, right? Where you're out on the shoot and they're like, uh, no, don't say that, no, do that again. Or um, let's have you over here, you look better over here. Or hey, and, and Shane's a really creative individual and you probably have the director's hat on very much of the time where you're thinking about, well, we're gonna go this next and this next. And that ability to think about how the video is gonna be structured before you even start shooting it is kind of a reverse psychology. You have to think about what keywords are people gonna be searching for? What is the intro? What is the outro? What is the meat and potatoes of the video? And that's tough to get going until you've done more videos yourself and edited a little bit of it yourself. And I think then you can translate to whoever you're working with, whether it's the creative team or the videographer or the editor to say, here's what I was going for with this. So it's not just a bunch of hodgepodge of clips, right? Love it. Let's keep going. I want to hear from you guys and talk about we were, the misnomers. So other social media misnomers or mistakes. So I was just going to add to that earlier too. I think that sometimes we do get really caught up in the numbers. So whether that's follower count or likes or views or whatever it is. And I think that that's kind of a misnomer for me. A lot of times you'll spend time on a reel, for instance, and you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then you get like 600 views. And you're like, oh, wow, I spent all that time and hardly anyone saw it. You know, that's great. And then something random that you post, um, sometimes we'll get a, a ton of engagement. I think that you have to look at it as a big picture. I think that you've really got to look at it as being consistent. Um, this kind of stuff doesn't happen overnight. One video, you know, unless you are super lucky, one video is not going to give you that, you know, that amazing portfolio of clients. So being consistent with it and really, really trying to not focus on the individual numbers of everything. Obviously, you know, it's a numbers game to some extent, but you really cannot drown in the details of that. All right, I wanna hear some more misnomers, but real quick, I wanna remind the audience, since this is a social media class, that you should probably pull your phone out. In fact, we'll give away a few things, but we'll make it easy. All you gotta do is post a picture of the slides, the stage, the room, the panelists, and use the hashtag Masterclass Orlando. You gotta spell it right, though. It's spelled just like it sounds. We get a lot of people that misspell it, I don't know why. But <laughs> hashtag Masterclass Orlando will pick, I don't know, five of you to send some swag. So all you gotta do is post a picture from today's session. We'll send you some cool stuff, branded speakers, headphones, backpacks, we have all cool stuff. And of tag cool us stuff. in it, guys. Yeah, and tag, tag the panelists for sure. And they'll probably reshare it, they'll make you famous. It'll be great. Let's keep going. Uh, going back to what they've been saying, I think that one of the biggest reasons people don't post on social or don't post consistently is because they're fu so fixated on what the engagement is going to look like. And just to share a really quick story with you guys, I have been posting obviously for years. Someone reached out to me a year or two ago. He had never liked any of my posts. I had no idea he even existed. He wanted me to sell some mobile home that he had. And so I was super excited because it was you know, a Facebook lead and I didn't know who this person was. That turned into, now this year I'm selling $2 million worth of triplexes and duplexes for him off market. Once that sold, he wants to sell his home in Winter Garden, buy in Windermere. So this all came from someone who I didn't even know I was friends with on Facebook. So don't focus so much on that engagement or lack of engagement because people are paying attention. By, um, by the way, for those of you guys that are in the middle of posting, because I see a lot of you, it'd be really cool if you don't know what to say, tell people, hey, you should be in this room next month, is what you should tell them in your posting about Masterclass. Just throwing that out there. Keep going. The other thing to remember is that the worst content that you can put out there is the stuff that you don't put out there, okay? So how many of us have done a video before and we look at it, we're so fixated on, oh, my head wasn't tilted right, oh, I stumbled a little bit on that word, and then you don't post it. Well, you got nothing from that. The return on that was zero. So even if there's little mistakes in there, you're human. People like to work with other humans. Don't worry so much about it, you're the only one that cares. Well, it's also makes you more relatable, too. Now, so. It's actually one of the people's favorite content, is when you tell a story about something you screwed up or something where you're vulnerable. How many of you guys have ever read where somebody's like, I totally messed this up, and they read something vulnerable, and you're like, oh my God, they're human too. Raise your hand if you've ever had that happen to you. All right, some of you are lying, but a lot of you raise your hand. Let's keep going. For me, my mantra is always quality over quantity. So, um, and and it's a it's a struggle for me because I I would probably say I have the smallest Instagram following out of this entire panel. There's some, I mean, they they kick ass and and rightfully so. 
Um, but I would encourage you guys, it doesn't matter how big the following count is, as long as you are comfortable with what you're doing and you know that the product that you're putting out there, you're proud of, right? So it's a, it's a constant conversation I have with my video guy where I'm like, shit, man, these other people, I'm not, not talking about you guys, I'm talking people that have hundreds of thousands of followers on there and you see the, the stuff they're putting out there and you're like, how does this, this person, this individual, have so many followers, but their content's crap. So I'm constantly reminding myself, it's not about that, it's the quality that I'm putting out there, and then I'm actually doing it, and don't, I'm not comparing myself to those other people. And that, to go to the last question, as far as failure, that's something I, that I've failed out, because I have compared myself to these other Instagram influencers, and uh, it can put you in a really bad spot. So that was one failure. Another thing, too, like, this was actually kind of a blessing, um, the Hamilton video that Aaron was talking about earlier, in that video, I dropped the F-bomb three times. Uh, my former brokerage watched it before, they, it had a group uh, session. My, my broker was there, and it's a very prominent boutique firm, Dale Sorensen, if you know it. <laughs> it was a great brokerage. I don't, I don't mean to, to, to talk badly about it, but every Tuesday they would, they would feature videos and they just happened to feature mine and they just happened to not watch it beforehand and they, they played it. And uh, there I am in a closet talking about how large it is using um, a, a modifier. The closet is effing huge, I think is the That's line. times three. Um, and then Dale Swanson was like, oh my gosh. So failure potentially, but also a blessing because I determined <laughs> that it wasn't really a great fit for that individual and I could tell that he was just disgusted. Um, so that's a failure. I, just, I felt like I needed to, to talk about. That's it. And I was just going to say, too, I mean, I think that everyone being in this room, you know, we're all extremely different, right? But social media and, you know, putting yourself out there in social media is not one size fit all. So we can do very, very different things. You know, I look at Shane's page and I'm like, oh, my gosh, his stuff is amazing. I don't have, you know, the production or I don't have anything like that even close to that out there. Um, but it's, it's working for me and it's who I am and, you know, I would love to grow into something a little bit different, but I think that figuring out what works for you and maybe it doesn't work for you for a long time, you know, maybe it works for you for now and you figure out, you know, the tools that you need and how to get there, but it's not one size fits all. It's not, you know, and I love how he says quality over quantity, but it's like sometimes for me, it's just getting things out there, right? Being present and really interacting with with your sphere and your followers because at that point to me that's where i see the the biggest difference so just obviously you hear everyone and just kind of take it with a grain of salt too because it's it's really going to come down to what uh what works the best for you i know the coach john chiplack says my shitty video will outperform your absent one say <laughs> say that one more time shitty video outperform an absent one so just a thought uh, and when I meant quality, though, it wasn't necessarily about the production. It was, yeah. it was mainly about potentially metrics of engagement. So views, I think people can just obsess over and then, oh, why did this video fail, right? It could only have maybe 100 views. But you might have some very quality people that engaged with it, and then they, they reach out to you behind the scenes and you're a lead from it. So focusing on the, the, the metrics of how many people viewed that, I think it was yeah. a failure again for me because there's more people that view it than Instagram shows you or Facebook or all these other accounts, and you don't know the quality of the person that's viewing that. So again, from like a, a space of encouragement, don't g obsess over the views, obsess over the quality of engagements you have with the people that reach out to you. Lou talked about it, she spends 15 minutes as soon as she posts something engaging with the comments. Like that's it, critical. Also treating social media like as a social space. Comment on other people's stuff, like their stuff, share their stuff. It's a social network. It doesn't mean you just post and, and go to sleep. You can't it's, just take, you have to give too. Yeah. So how many of you guys have got something out of today's panel, make some noise? I've got at least one more question for these panelists, but before I do, I want to get a few takeaways from the room. Uh, we'll give out some stuff uh, to whoever shares them, and we're going to be buying the first, I don't know if it's five, six hundred dollars worth of food, I'll check in a second, uh, plus tips, so stick around and order some food, we might end up paying for yours, especially if you're first. But um, before I ask these panelists, I have one question that was, came from Zoom. Shane, real quick, what was the tool that you used to set up your calendar? What's your? Uh, it's called Vite, V Y T E dot com. V Y T E. Um, and then people, other Calendly, anything else on this stage? Uh, I said Planly. Planly, Calendly, and Vite. There you guys go. There's also Schedule Once, and uh, I think that's probably enough. But uh, all right, one more time, let's give it up for the panelists. Here's 
what I want to, and this will probably be the last question, but we may have time to ask one more. We'll see in a second. I want to know how long you spend on these platforms and how long you spend creating the content. And then for those of you especially shooting video, how you batch that. So let's, uh, we'll start with you, Shane. We'll go on this side and come all the way down this way. So again, very processed uh, on my end. I do have a full-time videographer who uh, is re leading my creative division. W every Wednesday, I have a, a five-hour block on my calendar, and, it, and it's always there. And that's when we, we shoot and batch everything. It used to be one-off, so I'd say, hey, Connor, I got this amazing idea. Let's go shoot tomorrow. Uh, and it just, the more you do it, just it's a very inefficient way to do it. So it lives in my calendar every Wednesday. We're shooting, or even last Wednesday, we did a brainstorming session where it was all strategy. But we block it out, we batch it out. Um, as far as the creative flow goes, I have a note sheet just on my Apple I've, and um, on my phone. And uh, it's shared between Connor and I. So if an idea presents, he'll come out, he'll write some other things in there, and then we collaborate back and forth. And then every Monday, we know what we're shooting on Wednesday and what we're posting as far as cadence goes. So there's strategy behind all of that. And I know that's not how a lot of you operate. But again, I'm always thinking efficiency and scale. Um, and it's hard to do it if you don't have those processes in order. Real quick, before we keep going down the line, I want to get three takeaways from the audience because I almost forgot it. And I want to plug two dates in your schedule. You guys should put the evening of September 8th in your schedule. Those of you that are in the top 500 or are advertising partners, you should already have a link to be able to sign up for our early bird tickets for the Orbeez. We're hosting our annual awards gala at Hard Rock Live, which means that we have a ton of space. But well, you want to give it up for that? I mean, that's a pretty cool place to host an event. Not to mention I, mention, I was once banned from Universal to 2099, but we'll talk about that at the Orpies. <laughs> so uh, tickets are discounted right now for people in the top 500 and our advertising partners. For everyone that's not in that group yet, keep your eye on our page. Tickets will be available in the next probably week or two. Uh, they'll open up to everyone, and you're going to want to grab one because they're going to sell out like that. And it's like a $40,000 event, so I promise you it'll be a ton of fun. We'll give out a ton of awards, have a lot of food, a lot to drink, a band, all sorts of stuff. But real quick, three takeaways from the audience. Let's get someone, someone who's got a big takeaway to share. Yep, over here, Christina. Make yourself, Make yourself easily bookable. There you go, here. Let's get another one. And by the way, the rest of the people don't have anything to throw, so Bryce, find the people that we call on, and we'll get their info, we'll get you some free swap. Yep, right here. Private? Facebook for your previous clients. That's a good one. In fact, you know what we'll do? We'll book you for the Orpies. No, I'm just kidding. By the way, can we give it up for Sharon, who we booked for the Orpies? She's playing guitar with her husband, Dana. It's, it's going to be awesome, I promise you. Like, they're, they're freaking phenomenal. Uh, let's get another one. Yep. Authentic and intentional with your content. There we go. Yep. Yes, in one second. Let me get one more takeaway. Yeah, over here. That's the money one. Ken Posick shared it. He does like 24 million with uh, through other agents. Build relationship with other agents and other places. By the way, all these people I'm calling on says I don't have stuff to throw this month. You gotta find Bryce. Bryce, raise your hand. He's our publishing director. By the way, give it up for Bryce. He booked the Hard Rock and sets up all the stuff. And uh, you gotta find Bryce to get free stuff. Last month, like nobody went and found him after, so we didn't give anything away. So we were giving out cash too. So I kept it. So uh, make sure you find Bryce after. Yep, right here. Snap Talk was another really good one. Over there, yep. Might as well keep going. Yep. Yeah, I'm pointing at you right there. Progress over perfection. Don't worry about making it perfect. Just get it out. Progress over perfection. Don't worry about making it perfect. Absolutely. Right here. Absolutely. Educate. Or I, I will turn it. In, it's entertain, then educate is always kind of the mantra. Anyone else want to share a takeaway? Yeah, right here. TikTok for outreach, Facebook and Instagram nurturing. Anyone else? Let's get one more. All right, that's it. Let's give it up for our panelists. I'm going to ask them one more question, though. They don't leave yet. By the way, I want to remind you guys, we're here next month on August 18th at masterclassorlando.com. You can probably still get a free ticket. Tomorrow, they might not be free. You might as well grab it. Stick around after and meet people and make, mingle, grab some food. I'm buying the first at least $500 plus tips, but it's probably more already. If you missed part of this or you just jumped in, we'll get you the entire replay. And heck, we'll make it available to everybody. We'll put it on YouTube. Y'all, we're still going though, so shh. And uh, that's really it for all that stuff that I wanted to share. But let's just go down the line and keep hearing from you guys. 
We're talking about how long you spend and how you batch your content, what the scheduling looks like. Luana. I'm just a huge time blocker. That's the way I live my life. Once you kind of get into a flow for one thing, you just, you know, it just, it's easier, I feel like. So if I'm doing content or anything for social, it's phone on silent, I'm taking a couple hours. Um, I think some content can definitely be pre-planned, to be quite fair. And then I think some of it should be spontaneous as the market changes, as current events are changing, as inventory changes, et cetera, you know, your listings, whatever you have. Um, so yeah, definitely some things you can pre-plan, like the social proof that he talked about, things like testimonials, videos, new construction, things like that. And then the rest is, is spontaneous. I always work two weeks ahead because when things get crazy, the first thing that falls to the wayside is always, always, always social media. So plan ahead. I do use an app called Buffer. I think it's like eight bucks a month and you can schedule every single type of social and you can now even schedule your reels to post. Um, that includes LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, pretty much every platform and it's awesome. Can name that app one more time? Buffer. Buffer. Uh, I also time block, so I have a couple hours on Monday where I'm putting content together, TikTok, uh, not TikTok, but Instagram Reels, and I, a lot of times when I'm scrolling through, I will just simply use the notes section of my phone and write down the ideas that I have so that when I have that content block, I can go back there and easily cut and paste and put it on my videos or in my um, Planoly. Um, another thing that I do on the regular is stories. I'm in my Instagram stories every single day. So when you ask how much time I spend on social media, I mean maybe 10 hours a week at the most because I have those few posts set up that I batch content and then I'm just in my stories every single day and then I have a little bit of time um, in the morning and the evening where I'm getting back to messages and engaging. I'm also a spontaneous poster. I just kind of get inspired by something and decide to talk about it. The only real planning I do for my post is when I'm booking my photography sessions. Um, I go to Shay and I say, hey, listen, this is kind of what I want to focus on this quarter. So generally, I'm talking about homes. Right now, I'm focusing on small businesses in the area. So that's really the only kind of planning that I do for it. Also, um, going back to what Lou was saying about having private groups, you can also have public groups. I have one for small businesses, and that also brings in business for me. So just think about that. Like, whatever your interests are, plan content based on that. We've got a great group, by the way. It's called Orlando Real Estate Events and Classes. If you're not in that group right now, I don't know how you ended up here. No, I'm kidding. But uh, you should join that group so you don't miss the next one or any other future sessions that we do. I'm just throwing that out there. Go ahead, Tiffany. So for me, I tend to look ahead at the month. Um, not that I'm necessarily creating every post, but I look at things that I maybe want to highlight. What's something that I haven't covered in a while? What's something that's happening, happening currently? And then I think what's really important too is let's say that you come up with you know five steps to buying a house or whatever the, the content is, but creating several pieces of content around that. So it takes time, right, to create a caption and to create the video. And I think that really utilizing whenever you come up with a great topic, use it for other things. Use it as a, you know, a takeaway that you can create and share, you know, with other people, but really utilizing things as maybe it's a video, maybe it's a post, maybe it's you're talking about in your stories. Don't overcomplicate it. You know, if you're spending the time to really come up with a great topic, utilize it in several different ways. I think, and I think having the buckets is also like important. So whether you're a spontaneous poster or someone that's planned, at least having that direction is going to be helpful. I think, Kat, you said you have two primary buckets or yeah. potentially, yeah, so referral, referring agents and then the consumer face sellers. But like for you guys to figure out, okay, what kind of content do I want to focus on? Is it knowledge? Is it, is it listings? Am I giving advice to buyers? Whatever it is. And then that's going to help you come up with ideas and then get inspired by some of these other things you're seeing. And you can take the idea, write the note. On Reels, you can save the audio and then go back and do something with it. But having that direction, at least the way that my mind works, I have to have that. Otherwise, I'm all over the place. So having that structure, I think, was very helpful. And Justin, how long do you spend on it and how do you batch the content? <laughs> I'm not the greatest person to ask about content, uh, carving out the time, right? It's, it's spontaneous a lot of the times. But, and you got, we're getting busy, right? You're selling a lot of real estate and you don't have as much time to make content, it feels like. But you want to keep that balance going. So I recently 
recently did an accountability partner where we said we've got to make one good YouTube video per month and we're going to take that long form content and chop it up and use it on other platforms. So at least it gives us a little bit more than just one piece of social media. Love so that, that's all I got for now. Love it. How many of you guys, how many of you guys love learning from this panel? Let's make some noise. I'm going to make this simple. Right? How many of you guys would stick around and buy food if I get at least one or two more questions out of these panelists? Raise your hand. It's going to depend. Raise your hand if you'd stick around and buy some food if I get one or two more questions. All right, not enough of you raising your hands. So that's it, guys. We'll see you next month. Give them a round of applause. Real quick, let's get a photo. I want to get a picture with all of us. Yeah, we won't move them. Just jump.